What's going on everybody? I'm back with another video. This video is going to be analyzing how to use a mid block, what makes it unique, and how to use it effectively. So before we start, be sure to check out my book. There's a link in the description below. But let's get right into it. It's going to be a quick video today. So now the mid block is played in this midfield third of the field. And as you see, we have an extra field division down the center of the field. And this is just to break up the central corridor to then give us a, a more accurate reference points for horizontal compactness within the defensive team. And one thing to note about the mid block, it has the most volatility in terms of distances between players and between the lines both horizontally and vertically because in the mid block the offsides is introduced and now the defensive line has to make decisions on how high to hold the line they have to take cues from the ball how much pre pressure is on the ball and the options of the ball carrier the non-verbal cues that the other team gives to the defenders and then the midfielders and where are the outlets and then this is some of the ways they can decide on where to set their line, when to step, when to drop, and things of that sort. So now in the midfield third, it becomes very crucial that the team maintains vertical and horizontal compactness as well as using diagonal compactness when the ball does go into wider areas. Vertically, the team should be about 10 to 12 yards between each separate horizontal line between midfielders, between defenders, midfielders, and forwards always about 10 to 12 yards within this and when they go to press they need to maintain these connections and maintain the distances between these lines horizontally as well as we can see here there shouldn't be a distance greater than 15 yards but typically we'll see about 12 yards between each player and in the defensive line this is a bit different because the central defenders will often become more narrow with the fullbacks then being able to press into the wide areas the midfielders will then follow the rule of 12 to 15 yards, 15 yards being the minority in their distances and becoming a little bit overstretched. Now the forwards, again, 12 to 15 yards, but they, when playing with two forwards, you often press with one and cut off a first line passing option with the other, and then their positioning takes up a more staggered approach. So obviously, other than the space in behind that should be protected at all times based on the positional cues of the defense. The next most dangerous space is in the central corridors and between the lines. So here we're going to highlight it just very quickly. Between the lines and the central corridors is the most valuable space and should be protected at all times, whether that be using cover shadows or just com compactness principles, which would then be vertically compact and horizontally compact to give multiple players access to these areas. So if the ball were to enter between the lines, pressure would be able to be mounted and the ball would be able to be won into these areas. The next most dangerous area would then be the platform. The platform is pr typically the space where the holding midfielders occupy. And in this area, attacks can really be started here and and the defensive structure can be disrupted so if the ball were to enter a central midfielder the team would then have to adjust their shape become more narrow to block entry passes between the lines or third line passes to in ignite a third man movement these actions should try to be prevented by the collapse of the defensive structure becoming more narrow and closer together then forcing the ball into less desirable areas via the first line or the wide areas. Now we see many different approaches to the game on how to press a back three. And typically teams that use the back three like to create their numerical advantage in the first line compared to the first line of pressure. And with this, there's a few different approaches. A lot of times with a double pivot, we'll see two forwards to use their cover shadows to then block entry passes into them. Or we can see a little bit different approach if we move to more of a three-man front line. If we move to a three-man front line like we are here, we then start to see the natural occurrence of the cover shadows of these pressing players. So the nine uses his cover shadow to pretty well block the double pivot because the ball would have to travel through the nine to get there, or they would have the 
two holding midfielders on their defensive team stepping in to prevent these actions. Now, the one thing to consider when using three men in the front line is the structure protecting them, which is very important. Now we have two holding midfielders, but also we have three central defenders. So now if the ball were to be played into a holding midfielder and then into an advanced area, we could then quickly have our back three shift and a defender jump into this area. So the players would then be moving forward onto attack, moving forward to jump to advancing players rather than midfielders dropping deeper to then pick up these players. So a different dynamic and how the defensive actions occur. And then also when the ball enters a wide central defender, we can press in to out now using our cover shadow to then take away the double pivot, even drop in a nine to then create more security around these two players, allowing our central midfielders to shift more freely and now protect the half space as well, protecting the press from a different area. And then now we start to see the semblance of diagonal compactness. And just diagonal compactness here, if you haven't heard of it, it's pretty much, if we look at these diagonal lines here, it's just a way teams can try and prevent diagonal passes into central areas. So for instance, if the ball is in the wide area, try and prevent the opposing team from playing into central areas. They use diagonal compactness and try and create staggering in these areas as we see here. So when they go and press, we might have our wing back press out wide, arriving a little late. And now we have our diagonal compactness from the wide area into a more central area trying to stagger themselves to then create more spatial control. So that's all I really want to get into today about the mid block and I hope you guys liked the video. Please like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.